What's happening, everybody? It's Sean with Reactions to the Classics. Today, we got a reaction to My Life with the Thrill Kill Cult, a band I've never heard of, and the album Confessions of a Knife, brought to you by friend, longtime supporter, and patron of the channel, Robert. Thank you, Robert. Appreciate you. Appreciate all the patrons who make this thing go. If you like sports in any way, check out that Patreon link below or the patron link on the end screen. We couldn't do it without the patron. All right. I don't know anything about them, but My Life with the Thrill Kill Cult, often shortened to Thrill Kill Cult or TKK, should probably be the better option, right? It was an American electronic industrial band originally based in Chicago and founded by, these are their change names, but what they're known by, Groovy Man and Buzz McCoy. They became known in the 1980s as pioneers of the industrial musical genre, although by the early 90s they had changed to more disco-oriented sound and a frequent target of censorship groups, including the PMRC, which objected to the band's humorous and satirical references to Satan, Jesus, and sex in their song lyrics and stage shows. I'll get to that in a minute. During the early 90s, they had several hits on the U.S. dance club and alternative charts. They also contributed songs to several movie soundtracks and appeared in the 1994 film The Crow, a film that this guy once saw in the theater. The band has continued to record and tour with a rotating lineup in addition to core members McCoy and Man. 12 studio albums. So the way they came about, Man and McCoy met in the spring of 1987 while touring together with the band Ministry. Soon after, they began to conceive an art film to be called My Life with the Thrill Kill Cult, a headline taken from a British tabloid man had noted a few years prior when he lived in London. The film was never completed. It'd be a great title to a movie. But the music they recorded for soundtrack appealed to Wax Tracks Records, who released the completed songs as a three-track EP. Then they launched My Life with the Thrill Kill Cult. When the first EP sold well, a full-length album, I See Good Spirits and I See Bad Spirits, followed in 1988. Both attracted attention from college radio stations and dance floors, as well as religious groups who balked at the overtly occult imagery in both the music and the artwork of the releases. The group continued to sow controversy with each subsequent release, and they became even more popular with the release of the 12-inch single, Cooler Than Jesus, which is going to be on this album, not the 12-inch remix single, but... Their second album, this one, became one of the best-selling releases on Wax Track and continued to goad parental groups with songs like A Daisy Chain for Satan, that's our first song, and Rivers of Blood, Years of Darkness. Along with Label Mates Ministry, KMFDM, and Front 242, they helped develop the industrial music genre, but they themselves continued to evolve, creating a sound that was not easily identified or categorized. It was electronic club music with heavy beats reminiscent of both disco and funk. Yet amplified to a sometimes abrasive level. They reflected a shift where dance records could be ominous and aggressive, and they laced their records with riffs and references that would seem more at home in a heavy metal group. One of their most distinctive characteristics is their use of spoken word samples lifted from B movies and old television shows, and we're going to have some of that in this album. At the onset of their career, their music was known as having a satanic theme, although used in a satirical sense. The occult element of the band has moved to the background in recent years as they have focused more on their disco sound, although still laden with satire. As I mentioned earlier, this is their second studio album. The 1990 CD release, if you have that one, has one extra track, Do You Fear the Inferno Express, which we're going to go ahead and have on this reaction, right? The bonus track. If you haven't been with us before, the music won't be in the video, but it'll be at the Vimeo link below. So click on that. Follow along with us to hear the music. I'm going to start out by saying this, and if you've watched this channel, you know this, but you may just be a fan of this band and you're coming in. So I'm just going to let you know up front, I'm a Christian. It's the most important thing in my life. I haven't gone to church in five years. Um, that's a whole other story. used to be a pastor on a staff after I saw the inside workings of that church and many others. There's good churches in America. There's just not one that I've found around me. Let's leave it at that, the corruption and all that. You see all these Christians on TV judging people, all that stuff. That's not what Christianity is about. It's not what the Bible is about. But anybody who doesn't know anything about Christianity assumes those people who claim they represent it are what it's about. I totally get that. So I keep my opinions for the most part out of these reactions, my personal views. I'm very objective. I try not to be subjective at all. I mean, you can't totally do that. So I'm going to be very objective about this album, the music, that stuff. The lyrics, I know they said, quote, it's satirical, satanic lyrics. That's kind of where I draw the line. When you're glorifying Satan and if you're diminishing God or Jesus... I mean, I'm going to say something about the lyrics, guys, but I'm still going to judge the music as it should be judged. I just want you to know that up front. Robert already knows that. He said this is one of his favorite bands for a decade. Not, I don't think necessarily now, but for a decade. He says he's a Christian too, but um, overtly like mocking Jesus and God is not satirical in the way that I read the Bible. But I just want you to know that up front. You can come with me at the comments. That's fine. 
I'm going to stand up for what I believe in. And at the end of the day, boys and girls, it's my channel. You can always click off the video if you don't care for it. But all right, let's start this thing off with the first track I mentioned earlier. It was going to be A Daisy Chain for Satan. It features multiple audio samples from a 1967 radio program. So we talked about that entitled A Child Again, presented by the WNEW Radio News and Public Affairs Department, in which Steve Young interviewed a young woman named Marcy who described her life as a hippie. So just, you know, that's what she's doing when you hear it in here. I'm going to have the lyrics up as always. Thanks again, Robert. Okay, a really interesting song. I love what they did with that. The panning, the headphones, the mix. Mixing this girl in there. He's talking about us being in drugs. She is the white rabbit. You know, that's a throwback to Alice in Wonderland, the white rabbit taking you down this, this sort of dark path. I mean, obviously there's a song about it from Jefferson Airplane. It's mentioned a lot of times with the drug use and all that stuff. But, um, you know, her vice is drugs. I've never met a person. I'm not saying every person's like this, but I've never met a person that does have some sort of vice, right? We all have them, man. So I don't sit here and judge that. So, all right, now... I mean, there's nothing in that song that was objected to me, even though it says a daisy chain for Satan. Now we go to the days of swine and roses. All right, the days of swine and roses. I mean, the bass work in there is absolutely just banging in there, the industrial drums. I mean, both these first songs are definitely industrial rock type things, right? I mean, just big time and so well produced. The first part of it where he says, effer, pig, effer, I don't want to get this video flag for profanity because they put you in a whole nother category and this video will never get seen if they do that on YouTube. But sample from the movie, Female Trouble. And then that whole that whole Christian zombie vampire, the way that's mixed in there just sticks in your head. So there might be some overtly religious stuff. It's nothing. It's nothing, man. It's a good song. First two songs, I mean, they're masters at the way they're constructing these songs. And this song was crazy catchy next up we go to hand in hand all these songs on this album almost all are, are really long i mean that's just the way this kind of music is put together i mean this this album's an hour long so let's get it all right hand in hand i don't know what all the clips were from because it's hard to find like i said there's not a lot out there on this album definitely heavy industrial but also electronica music right heavy into that too so the two kind of mold here more than they probably did in the first two songs or the, the kind of meld together i i liked it when it started i'm like this one's not for me you know the vocals are mixed in the background almost remind me a little bit of my bloody valentine there but as the song went on it had two or three false endings right and then went back into that beat that kind of just brought you into it so i could see how in dance clubs man this kind of stuff was uh was popping off next up we got waiting for mommy all right waiting for mommy much more dance this i don't know how i always hate the word disco because it comes with such negative connotation for most people uh, but you know, a dance track until towards the end, then we get the industrial, but that bass is still just banging through their great, great riffs in there. That riff just repeats in your head and the way it's mixed. I'm not going to talk about the lyrics. I mean, it's nothing like satanic. It's just, you know, waiting for mommy. You could, you can read the lyrics. Um, another super catchy song. I know that's the idea, but I'm telling you right now in music like this, a lot of times there's a lot more misses than there are hits. They've done a fantastic job through these first four songs. Now we come up to the shortest song on here, but that's only because it's cut into two parts, right? We got Confessions of a Knife, in parentheses, theme, part one. All right, so really just a continuation for Waiting for Your Mommy. I would have played him as one track if I would have known that, but, you know, she's, Mommy's saying goodbye to her. Run, don't stay here. The curse, the curse. I was living a nightmare. I felt like a prisoner. So I've got to kind of remember that. I'm going to leave these lyrics up. So when we get to part two, we'll see how this thing ends or continues. But that's a while from now. Because next up, we go from the shortest song to the longest song. This is seven minutes, 10 seconds. We got Ride the Mind Way. All right, Ride the Mind Way. Like, the longer the sound started out with more industrial stuff, and as we're getting into it more, like, this is a total dance track, right? It just, we get that, we Ride the Mind Way just over and over, right, with that beat, man. It's just kind of uh, hypnotic almost. It's just a vibe, man, so... It didn't seem like seven minutes, but I, I, this is totally, I don't know if it was released as a single in the dance clubs or not, but this is totally up that avenue. Now, we're already to song seven. I have found absolutely nothing that offended me. It's possible these next couple might. I don't know, but like so far, um, I gave you that big speech at the start. Like there's been nothing that's offended me. Like, all right, we got Rivers of Blood, Years of Darkness. Rivers of Blood, Years of Darkness. I mean, I don't have a lot to add to the song. I mean, it's, you know, it's electronica and it's catchy and every one of these first seven songs have been put together 
just masterfully. This is not really my kind of music. I mean, I like it okay, the electronica and the industrial. Like, I can take it in doses. I wouldn't listen to a whole album usually on my own, but I mean, if this is the kind of music you're into, like, this is fantastic. Is this the song that's going to have some questionable satanic stuff in it? I don't know. Cooler than Jesus. I mean, maybe it said it has some groups upset, but a lot of things that get Christian groups upset doesn't get me upset. So I feel like I should go back and edit out my intro because I've read about this band and all these satanic references and I've really found nothing, right? I mean, we all deal with vices in our life. That's all over this album. It should be all over this album. It's all over life, but all right, let's go. All right, Cooler Than Jesus. I mean, what's the problem? What was the big, the big issue with as much to do about nothing, right? I mean... They say Satan, Satan twice at the end, like cooler than Jesus, the little mix in there. People, I guess Christian, certain Christian groups got pissed at that. Like Satan, Satan, don't listen to them. Somebody's lying. It's not me. You're twisting my words. I mean, whatever, man. Like catchy tune. I would imagine the 12 inch dance mix really went on and on and got the people out on the dance floor. Right, we got three tracks left because we're including the bonus mix. We got Burning Dirt. This has got a little bit of outtakes from Zombie 4, A Virgin Among the Living Dead from 1973. I'm sure a classic boys and girls, but I haven't seen that one. I mean, I don't know. I guess you could say this song has some quote evil stuff in there, right? And the whole repeating tonight we murder, which is actually quite catchy. I thought the guitar work in here, especially towards the, the back end of the songs, Fantastic, man. All right, now we had the first part back on song number five, Confessions of a Knife. That was part one. This is theme part two. Let's finish off this song. All right, Confessions of a Knife, theme part two, featured multiple audio samples of dialogue. That's from George A. Romero's Day of the Dead, a film back in 1985. This is the first song where I feel like, you know, it's like an art piece. It's not really a song. I mean, it is a song and it takes talent to do and mix it the way they did. Uh, they did a good job with it. It's just, it's not a song like these other things are songs. And an interesting way to end this album, because I think it's the weakest track on here. So we're going to go to the bonus track, but an interesting sequencing. I get why they did it that way. It's the name of the, of the album and they want to finish halfway through on song five with this part one and then the end of the album with part two. But I don't think it ends it on a high note which there's several of these other songs I would have chosen, but we're going to last track, the bonus track. Do you fear in parentheses, the Inferno Express. I could find other songs of theirs. Do you fear, but different things in parentheses. So I don't know if I have the right lyrics up, but let's finish this off. All right. Do you fear for your child? A, a total mix of dance and industrial merge on this song. It's fine. Good bass work. I mean, it's not a standout for me. It's not horrible. Now we'll get to my favorite tracks. This kind of music for me, as I shared with you, it's not really my kind of music, but I mean, I do appreciate it when it's done well. So standout tracks, like I thought, I don't want to give away my total score here. I could do that in a minute, but every track on here was good, right? But it's hard to have standouts in this, you know, in an hour of this. So my favorites, my honorable mention is going to be the Days of Swine and Roses, the second track. And my favorite is actually the very first track, A Daisy Chain, for Satan. So now we're going to get to my overall score. I said it a few times in this video, but I'm going to leave my intro in here. I'm not going to go back and edit it because I did all this research on this group and all this stuff came up about the satanic stuff and all these things. Look, man, maybe some of their other albums are. I've listened to a lot of music. We have 3,000 videos up. I've listened to a lot of music in my life. Most of the stuff and growing up in the 80s, man, when this became such a huge, ah, oh, this is satanic. This is Almost all of it is absolute nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. I've heard very few songs or artists who are just openly praising Satan. I've heard a few. Those I'll speak out against. This? Come on, man. Come on, man. If you're going to get all upset over this as a Christian, you should just go look in the mirror, man. Life goes on. It'll be okay. So, I mean, it's, I just wanted you to see how you go into something because you read a lot and how that kind of Gives you this mindset going in. All right, man, I'm going to have all these lyrics I'm going to have to come against. Ah, man, it's it's fine, boys and girls. Nothing to see here. Overall score on this album. I'm going to be in an 8.0, which is a really high score for first listen. I mean, this is super well done. Every single song is masterfully crafted. Whether it's my thing or not on that song, it's just so well done, man. And to mesh in and mold in these, these uh, 
audio clips from movies and different things. It's not the easiest thing to do to mesh that in there and then get the beat and like, it's just really well done. So I'm gonna be at 8.0. So let me know what you think of this album. Where does it fit in their catalog? What are your favorite songs? Thanks again to Robert for bringing this one. He brought it because it's Halloween month, boys and girls, at least when I'm recording this. It's October. So happy Halloween. And until next time, guys, I will see you.